Oh, have you heard of it with Mike Levine? No. Yeah. But okay, I heard the New name. I, I've heard the name of Mike Levine. I don't know if it's the same one yeah, or not. Yeah. yeah, Mike Levine was a former DEA agent, and he wrote a couple of books, like The Big White Lie. Yeah, anyway, I was on his show. This is about 1999, and Mike had asked me to line up some of the, the the show was about CIA mind control that was the topic and it was a series of programs and I believe he had um, uh, Eric Olson's son on was one of the guests all right and I forget his for Eric Olson was Eric it, Olson you, are, you, are you talking Olson. about the Frank Olson Frank Olson's son Eric so, Olson Eric okay uh, from yes. Maryland from the uh, yes. Fort Trick so area, apparently. Frank Olson was the CIA person that <clears throat> that was murdered. Yes, I spoke uh, with the son, too. with the MKUltra program. Yep, you know I'm familiar with that? that. Anyway, so <clears throat> we had a few people on, and Ted Gunderson. Now, I chose Ted Gunderson. Now, at that time, of course, we were still friends, and I didn't, I didn't have any kind of bad feelings at that time. So... I lined him up to, to be a guest on the program. And we also had lined up um, Jim Keith, who is now dead. And something very bizarre happened, very bizarre, uh, that, that this was in September, okay? I think, I think Jim Keith died in the middle of September 1999. Is that correct, you know? No, I don't know. Okay. In any case, what happened was... I was the only person in the studio, because I lived in New York State at the time. I lived in Woodstock, New York. So I, I drove down with a bodyguard to go, on, to go live into the station in New York City. So in any case, we could not get a hold of Jim Keith. He was all scheduled, he was, it, you know, uh, and he's one of the most famous conspiracy researchers, and he did wonderful work. In any case, he never called in. We tried to reach him. We couldn't reach him. He just he just wasn't there. You know, there was we couldn't reach him on the line. He was supposed to be on with us. So then I get a call. This a couple weeks go by. I get a call from Mike Levine, who who tells me, "Oh my God, you know, look what happened to Jim Keith." That was the first I had heard of it, and I had a terrible feeling, just a, he, a he terrible was like, shudder. He was I assassinated he was. after that. What's that? Are you, are you saying that he was assassinated uh, at I that believe, time? You see, he, he had a bizarre accident, a mysterious accident at this Burning Man festival. I forget where that is. But what happened is that he just, this is before he died, okay? He, he was still alive when for some mysterious reason he failed to call in for the show and we could not reach him. No ex We never found out why. The next thing we know, he was dead. Wow. So now, yeah. what that Ted then Gunderson is that, had something to do with that. Well, I, was, I would not even. On I wouldn't show. even presume to to speculate. Let me. Let me. I'll tell you what I what happened, and people can make of it what they will. So what happens is we cannot reach Jim Keith. This is Mike Levine and me that are in the studio. We cannot reach him. So. He said, well, what are we going to do? We have to get another guest to take his place. And so, you know, we called Ted Gunderson, and Ted Gunderson provides another guest to take the place of Jim Keith. It's John DeCamp. Okay, so now I didn't, I, ne I never knew John DeCamp, ever. You know, I had wow. never met him, never spoke to him, nothing. All I knew about him was he was a friend of Ted Gunderson. So then we start talking about all these issues, and the camp starts saying these things that are just, I'm, I'm listening. And one of the things that he said, which I was absolutely shocked and also disgusted, was he, he was saying that Henry Kissinger was one of the good guys or something along those lines. Not Maybe not one of the good guys, but he was actually defending Henry Kissinger. Wow. Because somebody else, yes, yeah, somebody else who was on the program was a mind control survivor, <clears throat> um, 
her name was Sue Ford. She was also on the program. In any case, um, she was she was talking about her horrible experience with Henry Kissinger, and DeCamp comes on and starts talking about this guy as if he's like an A-OK guy. And so I said to myself, something's wrong with this guy, DeCamp. Yeah. Well, I, let I me, just let, let me uh, interject this, Barbara, just for the listeners. John DeCamp is the counsel in the famous case of the Franklin cover-up. He wrote the book, The Franklin Cover-Up. He was also the senator of Nebraska, or was the former senator of Nebraska. Yeah, the state yeah. senator. And more importantly, insofar as CIA and Henry Kissinger, John DeCamp was assigned to work under William Colby, CIA director under Kissinger in the White House. And it was 1969, if you remember my work in the book Emerging Viruses, AIDS and Ebola, it was Kissinger who ordered the development of the AIDS-like and the Ebola-like viruses through the CIA's project called MK Naomi, which was a subordinate part and went under the cover of the mind control public persuasion program called MK Ultra that Barbara is an expert in and was programmed in to serve that program by CIA operatives. Barbara can tell you more about that. And, and yeah, well, here's, here's the thing. I, I want to say this, and this is no news flash, certainly, but Henry Kissinger is a demon, okay? Yeah. He's, a, he's a demon. There's, he's like Dick Cheney. There's no other way to possibly describe Henry Kissinger. I agree. So when I we hear agree. somebody... Um, Absolutely. And, Talking and for about those, him like, oh, he, you know, he's not so bad or he's okay. I knew something was really wrong at that point. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, go so ahead. I'm getting continue. an echo now on my, on my line since I started to talk about this. Well, it's probably True Odd and Greg Szymanski listening in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. but, so. okay. But let me, let me just get to, to the point, Okay. The, the point that, that I wanted to make was that I, I, it was revealed to me by the Holy Spirit that John DeCamp was involved. He wasn't somebody who exposed this stuff. He was somebody who was covering it up along with Ted Gunderson. Mm. And he was involved. He himself was involved. And I was so horrified when, um, when this was revealed to me. Uh, that the next time I saw Ted, that program was in summertime, okay, it was, um, I think it was August of 1999, the program was Mike Levine. <clears throat> in any case, the next time I saw Ted was November of 1999. We both were going to be speakers at this conference in Philadelphia. So we we met there, and then Ted invited me and my bodyguard to spend a couple at his son's house in New Jersey, which is right over the border of, uh, you know, Pennsylvania. So I, I told Ted, I said, you know, I need to, I need to speak to you alone. So we, we, we poured ourselves a drink and we went out on the, um, like, veranda because we were at his family's house. And I, all I said to him was this. I said, Ted... I have a piece of information that's from an uh, unimpeachable source. I'm not going to tell you my source, but I'm going to tell you what I know, and all I need to know from you is, do you know about it? And so I told him what I knew. Uh, I said, did you know that DeCamp was involved? And he said, yes, I did know. And then... Of course, I was shaking by this point, and I said, Ted, uh, if you knew this, how, how and why can you possibly be defending this person? How can you do this? And um, then he started trying to, well, you know, he did a lot of help for the children. And I said, no, he didn't. He didn't do any help for any children. He's a criminal, you know. Yeah. And that ended it for me. That ended, It broke my heart, and it ended it for me because, um, you know, it's if it's one thing, you know, you're talking about love before, 
<clears throat> well, the reason I do what I do, the reason I go after these criminals, is because I do love people and children and animals too. You know, the, I, I go after all of them because these are these are people are satanic and they're demonic, and there's nothing more <clears throat> devastating for a child. Nothing more devastating for a child than to have some kind of, uh, you know, sexual abuse, rape, torture. Nothing, it ruins the child's life forever. I've known enough people. It, thank God it didn't happen to me, but I've known enough people, <coughs> including my sister, uh, to know what it does, the damage it does, and you know it. So, folks, uh, folks, listening, I, I want to interject something here, that the Franklin cover-up and the DeCamp and the Gunderson connections are dealing with the national, if not international, child trafficking network that involves... Please enter your extension state. number. When done, press the pound key. Gee whiz, that's interesting. Ma Bell clicks in, huh? <laughs> so, uh, the, the content of tonight's program is now dealing with... I guess we just bar. We, we pray the Bible will be fine. At any rate, folks, tonight we're dealing with the subject now that John DeCamp and Ted Gunderson are being discussed in so far as their association with a Church of Satan, initially now called Temple of Set, run by Michael Aquino, which is the, among the highest level officers of the United States military MK Ultra program and that this engagement in a satanic child trafficking network is where the evidence indicates the approximately 50,000 or more children are disappearing annually in the United half States alone. Well, million. there's half a million unexplained disappearances. 250,000 are unaccounted for. There are 250,000 beyond that that are accounted for. But when you look you at what... What, Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Bobby, you're hey, back Barbara. with us. That's yes. great. Great to have you join yeah, us. Well, this, I'll tell you, I knew this was going to happen. And think when it happened, when I was talking about this stuff, right? Right. Right, right. Well, I, I, I was carrying on, and the Holy Spirit's <laughs> with us. So we're just, I was just explaining that the numbers of missing children abducted, kidnapped, according to experts, put it conservatively in the tens of thousands and so it's very ultra-conservative for us to say that tonight's program is to ideally expose the top-level military, CIA, FBI, and Church of Satan officials that are responsible for thousands of children being abducted, sexually enslaved, and tortured, and murdered. I, I want to just... Uh, put out there that I also got um, really bad hits from these people in regards to their involvement with uh, the child uh, sex trafficking and pedophilism. If you look at the pictures that they put out onto the internet of the young boys that are put into bondage, I mean, who would, I mean, actually take pictures like that and put them out to the public, and what was the purpose of them getting it out? Was it to create fear in people? It was actually, I know the Franklin cover-up was created as a distraction for something much larger, but you look at those pictures, and you have to know that these people are all so sick and twisted, and that they can, you know, take these pictures and let them out and give them to the boy's mother and and circulate them all over the Internet and on porn sites and get it out to the public let, that let that's me, happening. Let me interject an important point for everybody to understand. What Sherry is talking about is fear induction through mass media persuasion that puts you into a state of dysfunction. And that is one of the two main objectives of the COINTEL pro operators led by Gunderson involving Timothy Patrick White, Dr. Truott, the uh, Greg Szymanski, and about a half a dozen other CIA, FBI agent provocateurs involved here. And the second primary function of what they do is to confuse everything and to discredit everything, including themselves. And ultimately what's left in your brain is such confusion 
that the only reasonable thing for you to do is check out. Basically, turn it off. Become apathetic. And, and then, that way, participate in a conspiracy of silence that has kept these children.